let's talk about you've made the decision to, to proceed with therapy. Um, we talked a little bit about um, you know, there are different uh, comorbidities that might affect um, treatment decisions. There are now a you know, number of large randomized trials looking at BR versus RCHOP or RCVP and, and other um, therapies. So how do you use distill that data down to decide, you know, are you using uh, benamustine rituximab or are you using RCHOP or, or even RCVP? Yeah. Here, Luigi. So, you, uh, so it's, a, it's a real uh, different situation according to the Gallium study. There was uh, the presentation, the publication, and also the official indication in North America and in Europe concerning the, the comparison between conventional chemotherapy, CVP, pendamastin or CHOP, uh, plus uh, rituximab or binotuzumab. Anyway, I think at the end of the day, it depends by the background of the different uh, countries. For example, in Europe, in particular in Italy, in Germany, and Austria, in the most part of the Spanish center, we are using bendamastin in front line. And we continue to use bendamastin with obinotuzumab in high risk, intermediate risk, according to the FLIPI score on the basis of the gallium data. And for the other patient, we, are using, we continue to use bendamastin plus rituximab. Uh, Sometimes you can use CHOP plus uh, uh, rituximab or obinotuzumab in uh, in a young patient with a, a real high tumor burden, but normally we prefer to use bendamastin uh, containing regimen with a different anti CD20 according uh, to the different high risk. And, and so, John, we talked about it a little bit earlier about I think I think you were articulating that that uh, the, that a lot of a, that you're following guidelines in in London in England and that um, a lot of that requires obinutuzumab in certain patient populations. Yeah, so exactly as Per Luigi said, so the guidelines that we have establish that we should be giving the optimal therapy to the patients and on the basis of the clinical trials available, that would be uh, an obinutuzumab containing combination for the high risk flippy. So we're following exactly what uh, Per Luigi says, but we've got it kind of written in stone, so to speak. Um, what you partner it with, I'm finding that people are varying a little bit. Um, I um, favor bendamustine because what I'm looking for, which we'll come back to in a moment, what I'm looking for is the longest first remission I can get because everything that happens to the patient after depends on when they relapse. Um, and so if I, if I can offer a patient what I think is going to be the optimal duration of therapy, that's why I'm favoring for the higher risk patients, a bendamustine and a binutuzumab followed by a binutuzumab maintenance. I know that the benefit seen in gallium is, is small, but that's a big difference for that small number of patients in whom they're doing. So it's about sitting down and discussing the optimal therapy. Then, of course, the comorbidities that Laurie talked about obviously factor in. And um, we've talked a lot already about that bendamustine is in general well tolerated, but there are patients for whom some alternative would be the case. I personally prefer to keep an anthracycline containing regimen so that I've got it available at transformation if it occurs. So I, I like to keep CHOP for later in the armamentarium if I need it. Um, and that's, so that's the kind of the way that I think about it. Yeah, you've brought up a lot, some really important issues about sequencing, which we were going to spend some time on in a minute. But before we do that, John, I feel like it's different in the U.S. in terms of you know, the use of abinutuzumab or rituximab. And um, you know, what's your take on that? Well, I, I would say, yes, I mean, we're alluding to the fact that the, the PFS difference in gallium is on the order of 5 to 7 or 8 percent. The toxicity is a little bit more. You're committed to using maintenance. You don't have a subcutaneous option if you're using obinutuzumab. So all those things, to my mind, if there's not a survival benefit, um, all of those things, to my mind, make it less, less compelling. Um, and I don't use as much maintenance, so then I have a little trouble uh, because again, there's a, a lack of overall survival benefit, and so I have a little trouble applying the the gallium data to a maintenance-free approach if that's what you want to use. And I tend to think about maintenance more. I like to decide it at the end rather than the beginning. I want to see how the patient did with their in induction therapy. Um, so I, yeah, I think there's there's less of that. I also just want to mention as a side, there are still a fair number of patients that get single agent rituximab in my practice. I was front. going to and, comment on that um, because that's you know, another big yeah. difference between Europe. So single agent, there's a couple of countries, uh, Scandinavia and Switzerland, that still tend to use it. But apart from that, single agent rituximab is hardly used in Europe. That then impacts upon what 
happens later, as you've already seen, but it also impacts upon engagement in particular clinical trials. So, uh, and of course, I think it might also impact upon something we talked about earlier, that is that trigger to give first therapy. So in other words, if you're giving single agent rituximab as your therapy, because it's perceived as being so safe, your threshold for starting it might already be lower. Whereas if we are going to be using bendamustine and bendituzumab, we're really preserving it for when a patient really needs it. Even in the even in the the very elderly, there's not a there's not single agent rituximab given. It tends to still be given with some degree of, of chemotherapy. So single agent rituximab very seldom used in our practice. And for this reason, it's so difficult for European Centre to do a trial where there is a standard arm with rituximab as a single agent because it's so difficult to convince our patient also is that in our background don't use this. Yeah, and I don't. I don't I think it's different right here. Yeah, I think, you know, the classic scenario is a watch and wait patient who has a little more going on, maybe something cosmetic, maybe a little discomfort that you're not sure is from the lymphoma or not. Um, and and I don't think you lose a whole lot by giving them, you know, if, if you give them four doses of rituximab and it doesn't meet your goal and you, you know, six months down the line, give them bendamustine-based therapy, I, you know, you've you've lost that time, but it's usually a pretty benign time, and it's not a long time. And I think most people, um, but it also is how we present it to the patient as well. I think there's also patients who are just panicked by the idea of watch and wait, yeah. knowing they have a cancer growing inside of them, and we're not doing anything about it, even telling them all the evidence we don't have to. Um, that is a significant impact on quality of life. And sometimes, if you can at least justify a single agent rituxan even though you may not be doing tons for the lymphoma overall, in terms of their overall quality of life, it can make a dramatic difference. And I, think I, uh, that, uh, you know, I spent half my professional life working in the States and half in Europe, and I completely agree. Americans hate the concept of doing nothing. They just hate it. Yes. <laughs> Europeans love the idea that they don't need treatment yet. So <clears throat> the patient's response to watch and wait is very different on the two continents. Uh, interesting. Yeah. I I mean, I know that many, many of my patients, it's a difficult concept when you first introduce it, but after they've been doing it for a little while, we had the same issue with chronic lymphocytic leukemia that, you know, then, then it's always like getting people, telling them that you need therapy, they're like, no, 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 please don't, please don't treat me. And yeah. so that, you have that, yeah. that issue as well.